Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. There's another paid request, this time from Jose Ballard, who wanted me to do a commentary on the 2012 film The Cabin in the Woods. Now, for those who know my channel, first off, if you want to send a request for pretty much any type of video, whether it be review, commentary, topic, or feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And let's get into it. Three, two, one, pressing play. We have the Lies Day logo coming up. Now, for those who know me or know my channel, you'll know I'm not a fan of this movie. I was a fan of this movie when it came out. I'm not a fan of this movie now. If you are, that's cool. I'm simply not. I think the film had interesting ideas. I think the film had potential. But I remember at the time when this was called such a game changer. That's what I kept hearing. It's a game changer. It's a game changer. Yeah, it's such a game changer that I don't hear a single person talk about this film at all. I'd have to get Dog the fucking bounty hunter. To track someone down who actually talks about this film nowadays. And for a film that was such a game changer, go figure. Now, I like these two actors. Um, the actor on the right, he was the. I'm trying to remember if he was the villain in Billy Madison. But it's, it's Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins. Two really good actors. They've been on quite a bit of stuff. Now, if the movie was from their point of view, and the entire movie was about these two guys having to work behind the scenes in this making a horror movie, but it's real life, and all the different monsters they have to keep dealing with, as they keep doing these rituals throughout, I don't know, maybe it's a weekly basis. They say we haven't had a glitch since 98. I wonder what happened in 1998 that could maybe signify the, a glitch. But yeah, I, if it was strictly about these two, working in their 9 to 5 office job, maybe do like office space meets this crazy uh, horror comedy thing, that could work. But no. Instead we have these other characters, which honestly, other than Chris Hemsworth, I don't really care about. I mean, the performance not bad, like Anna Hutchinson, Frank Kranz, who's pretty much shaggy from Scooby-Doo in this. He's a s stoner. If I stop stuttering. But the film's directed by Drew Goddard. Joss Whedon helped write the film. He produced the film. What the film's about is this group of college students in the woods. And for a good chunk of the film, it just becomes, um, at best, mediocre woods zombie movie. And I, the, the reason they do that is because as some kind of ritual for the old gods that this underground facility has to portray. So they get a victim, which is a jock, a virgin, the slut, the stoner. They did like four or five cliches. And they get them into a location. 
they choose their own destruction. So I guess it's like fucking Ghostbusters. Choose your destructor. But from the ending with the John fucking hand smacking in the face, might as well be a hand. Rather have it be a giant hand giving me a blowjob. Hand job, any kind of job. Usually hand Steve hand job, not blowjobs. <laughs> and this is Chris Hemsworth. I mean, this came out after Thor. But it might have been made before Thor. Because it was delayed a little bit because the previous company, I think it was MGM, there were some difficulties. <clears throat> there were some difficulties in releasing films and MGM was kind of on a spiral downward which was affecting James Bond and other stuff. So this got delayed and eventually went to Lionsgate. But Chris Hemsworth, I mean, he's a good actor. Very rarely outside of Thor, he makes a film worth a crap. Although I did like Distraction, which I know there's a sequel coming out. So the first Distraction was actually pretty decent. You could probably say that's probably his best film outside of the, the Thor films. In fact, I would say I like Distraction more than Thor, but Distraction is more my kind of movie. But I do like the first Thor. But it's one of those things where <clears throat> it does have potential. <clears throat> but again, for a film that was deemed such a game changer, it's just, other than a couple clever moments, there's nothing really that special for its first hour and change. The only time it becomes a bit more special is in its third act, and that's ruined by a crappy ending wanty CGI when you have this big monster mash which I've already seen before in this film called Waxwork which was all done for peanuts and practically Waxwork was a film where you had this big monster mash where all these monsters come to life and they're battling these um, I would almost said villagers but People with the pitchforks and the torches ready to tip some ass. Or you know what? Watch where two lost in time where you have the sword fight going through multiple dimensions dealing with a wannabe Godzilla or in the world of Dawn the Dead or kicked and jacked the Ripper into a dimension so that he gets killed by Nosferatu. That to me is more of an interesting game changer and creative than this movie I did Marty is kind of a little bit of an annoying version of Shaggy from Scooby Doo And that's a clue to the ending. Society needs to crumble. We're just too chicken shit. Okay, it's one thing for society. Why am I stuttering? For society to crumble. And then the girl at the end would go, Well, you know what? We had our chance. So I'm not going to kill you. And I'm like, Okay, but what about all of the uh, millions and millions and millions of innocent people? Whether it be doctors, whether it be our children, whether it be babies, whether it be parents, who don't deserve it. I'm like, you're just as bad or worse as these guys in the information booth. I mean, I think it would have been interesting that yes, the first 
chunk of it you go in through the cliches of a slasher film you know here they meet the guy who says you're doomed you're doomed but always working with this government organization okay that's an interesting idea a government organization again makes up these certain things you have to follow for this ritual for the old gods because it's like the gods themselves want to see a movie that's how they are entertained and I would say if the gods were watching this movie they would be fucking bored it's like well fuck I want to change it up a bit I've grown tired I've grown bored and I think that would have been even more of an interesting take on it. That the following the typical stuff and you get these rumblings like, what are we doing? Like, it seems like God is getting more and more pissed at us each year. We're giving him what he wants. And they and nobody else realizes until the end that he's just bored. And so because then you have a group of people that are the cliches, but then, hey, the token black guy this the you can have the token Asian guy or the stoner or the but the lady is a stoner there you know you have a, a the dumb blonde she's actually a smart lady uh, the Asian guy is a stoner the token black guy he becomes the lead like Tim Foray the three of them uh, tick ass it's like wait these are the three that should die first and then they become like an assault on prison 13 mixed in with waxwork type of creativity. So yeah, you get a little bit of backward zombies. But then boom, some people get killed, but then they kill the zombies easily. What the fuck? That wasn't supposed to happen. Do something else. Okay, do something else. And then it becomes this intense battle for survival with these three or four characters after a few have been killed off and it's like what the hell it's like no matter what we do but then in the background the gods are more interested and the government thinks the gods are happy because wow we're doing something better we're doing something right but no the gods are happy because they are liking what's happening with these main characters wow that was an unexpected that was an unexpected twist Okay, we gotta unleash other monsters. That wasn't the plan. Just do it. And then you see another up and tick of the old god's interest. Okay, keep doing that. So again, the gods think they're happy with the government agency. No, the gods are happy with the main characters. Okay, this is off the beaten path. And then it becomes this assault on Priest 13 or take a page from Aliens where... They're in this cabin and all these different monsters are coming out of the woodwork. And so each character gets their own moment to shine. Until eventually they steep down into the underground. And becomes this intense bow survival where you have these one track takes. Where then the, the heroes get the monsters loose and something happens. And then it's practical, real. And you'd have the this jamboree of the monsters. But do it much more practically. I mean, people say it's budget. But I did, if they could get away with it in Waxwork and Waxwork 2, they got away with it with some of these other low budget. Maybe take a page for them and like, how did you guys get away with it? What did you guys do? Hmm. Learn from those techniques. Learn from those techniques. I mean, even if it's like, hey, we want to pay a bunch of makeup artists at scale, but you get to showcase your design in a feature-length film. Does I guarantee there'll be people at the time be like, okay, maybe I'm get paid a whole lot, but I get to showcase what I do. Is so it be go, oh, who's that guy? Yes, there'll be some people that want to be greedy and want the money, but there's going to be some people like, oh, yeah, I'm going to showcase it. So then you get this intense action horror film in the vein of From Dustal Dawn. 
and aliens again like in the Solomon Breezy 13 style film that'd be a much more fun exciting version of a movie than this because again like the first other than the snippets with Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford behind the scenes it just becomes a typical in one ear out the other cabin wood horror film and Chris Hemsworth there's really nothing to his character it's just oh I like the actor that's more why I don't mind the character other than but it's not really anything to do with the character writing or development. I mean, the characters are there at best. The acting is fine. It's not scary. There were not a lot of moments that made me laugh or chuckle. Once in a while, there's a, a lie in the middle. Hmm. Here's a jump steer. This two way mirror. <clears throat> but yeah, it's just, you know, I'm watching the one. Okay. I just don't really you don't watch you don't do something okay I mean, there are little moments like that I don't mind where they showcase that the guy's a decent guy. You know, so... It, it makes the char characters, at the very least, not unlikable. Yeah, you know, I don't find them unlikable. I don't find them... Uh, creeps or, or anything of the sort. And the dialogue just made it awkward. See, sometimes the dialogue is like trying too hard to be a bit like clever and hip and they could just let the moment settle. Hey, thanks for not being a creep. Hey, no, you know, no problems. The least I can do. But instead of trying to be too hip with, well, you know what? I had an internal debate and in fact it was such a fight that now it's bleeding and blah blah blah. It's like, okay, no, 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 no. Just, okay. You know, just saying. And that's what I mean, like, other than the underground facility moments, there's not a whole lot in this first like hour and change. It's just stuff you've seen many, many, many times. So I'm like, okay, it's so clever, but because we're showcasing the cliches, but then the day you're still just showcasing the cliches. Like we're so clever to, because we're showcasing the cliches. I'm like, yeah, but let's really break a lot of the cliches. But this is how they become cliches. 
We bait the dumb blonde, the slutty dumb blonde. We made... Pretty much the, the hair dye basis of that, it changes your libido and things of that nature, the dumb blonde stuff. Pretty much the Joe tears that he's on speakerphone and he doesn't realize it till too late. And yeah, I think it's because I remember seeing the trailer, really liking the way the trailer was edited. Where, yes, has the Marilyn Manson song play during it. And I'm like, okay, this could be very clever, very interesting. But it is one of those trailers that... Everything was given away until, like, the, the third act. Like, the whole bit with the them going underground the government facility it's just you get the reveal watching the movie that okay wow all these monsters but again a lot is done really crappy cgi it loses a lot of the impact and fun for it But this is a bet on what monster they'll pick for the destruction. Sorry I'm not saying much, it's just uh, I don't really know what to say about the, the film and these scenes. I mean, Drew Goddard, Joss Whedon, they had worked together on Buffy the Vampire Slayer and Angel. Apparently they wrote the screenplay in like three days, which is not a good thing. It's not a fucking good thing.
But this guy here, this uh, guy who's like the security guard, I wish more was done with him. Like, if he became someone, if he became someone that's like, I'm going to help the two remaining people fight and survive. So this guy's like a sleeping giant ready to awaken. It's like, you know, that would have been really cool too. And this would be like his redemptive arc where he helps these people out. And it's like, oh shit, this guy's not what we expected. He's fucking John Wick under... I forget the actors, the, the guy was that security guard. He was like, I'm not doing the, the bets. Yeah, this was filmed in 2009, so yeah, it was before Thor. With a $30 million budget. I didn't, I think of what, the, the stuff that was done with budgets less than a million and they had 30 million to play with and it's like well 30 million dollars is a lot more you could have done in terms of practical makeup effects you don't need a giant fucking CGI snake I'm sorry And of course, this is the showcase that she's being turned to the dumb, blonde, slutty character. And it's like, okay, well, again, I don't find this fun, exciting, interesting where, okay, now she's going to make out with this fucking wolf thing. It's like you have this build up and then you'll have like another fucking 30 minutes of this boring backward redneck zombie movie. And maybe because you know, I've seen so many fucking films dealing with zombies it's like nothing even you can't even have that portion be creative. Creative monsters, creative designs. I mean, hell, look at the movie Feast. There was this movie called Feast where there's a group of people trapped in this bar. And you had these really cool looking creatures. And you had a ferocious energy. And top-notch brutality. And that's the thing, like, Feast is a more clever movie. Feast, you didn't know who the hell the lead character was. This guy who wasn't that good of a guy, but he... And he's still a very flawed character at the end, but he's had his moments. And then you weren't even sure who the fucking lead was. And oh wow, that character died, and that character died already, and wow, they did they went that far? Like, if, if you want to see a film that's a lot more clever, but has that energy that I'm looking for, go watch Feast. The first one. The sequels suck. And that's a movie that's people trapped... Or from Dust Till Dawn, you have Clever. I wouldn't say Clever. It's good writing. Thanks to Quentin Tarantino. Because I'm sorry, Joss Whedon is no Tarantino. Joss Whedon, I've liked some of his stuff. I don't mind some of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But I don't think he's the, the end-all be-all either. The first Avengers, I think, is an overrated fucking film. In fact, I think Avengers Age of Ultron is a more entertaining movie. Than the first Avengers. The first Avengers. I think is okay. I always thought it was okay. Back in the day. I thought it was okay. And people were pissed at me. Maybe that's not as much of a. Egregious thing to say now. But it was back then. Trust me. And yeah. I say it's an okay film. I don't hate the first Avengers film. But it's okay. And here they gotta choose their destructor. So. Pretty much them. All these items, depending on which item they pick, that's the monsters that don't go after them. Which again is an interesting idea. That depending on which you choose, oh that's the, the monster in question. So you have all these trinkets down below that represents a backstory, a lore, a monster.
I mean, if this film was such a danger changer, I'm surprised they didn't make fucking prequels. You can't make a sequel because everyone's dead, but I'm surprised they didn't make fucking prequels. I mean, they did fucking vacancy follow-ups, vacancy. But there's no other Cabin in the Woods movies, thank God. So yeah, it's such a hit, such a game changer. I don't know why that just uh, so many times when so many critics say it's a game changer, that's a movie to be cautious about. It truly is. I'm like, fine. If you want to say it's a game changer, then the film better fucking impress me, and it fucking didn't. Want to be Annabelle doll back there? Annabelle came out before, after this, to be fair. What's that, a killer fucking ballerina? That's a wannabe, like, that's a Oh to Hellraiser, only it's a tube thing. See, each one has these things that could have a monster. The film might have been, out oh, maybe a sinister type of thing. I think that was that, sinister was after this as well. The Backwoods Zombie. I did. There are many other films that were more clever. Like, if you want to see, to me, a better clever slasher film, The Final Girls. Yeah, it doesn't have gore. This barely... I mean, I guess... Crappy CG stuff. Hard to even call it gore compared to a lot of the films I've seen. But it's not even that interesting of a legend. It's not that interesting of a lore or a backstory. Again, the characters are there at best right now. Again, they're not unlikable. The actors are doing their jobs, but there's nothing to these characters. I go, yes, those characters stand out. They just don't. I'm sorry. There's really nothing to them. They go, well, they stand out as X, Y, Z reasons as to why I, you know, like Kristen Connolly, she does fine. Jesse Williams. But, again, it, we're 32 minutes in, and other than creative choices of the background with the government agents again like if the movie was from their point of view all the way through or, or it was like a consistent take on their weekly ventures maybe that could be a bit more interesting is it really zombies we're going with zombies I guess to go more of that tired trope. Does it supposed to be? It's like the cliche. Either it's, it's, you know, it's Evil Dead or it's a slasher villain or it's zombies. I'm like. I didn't that one guy was like the security guy. He could potentially be an interesting guy. <clears throat> 
See, that's a little bit chuckle worthy where Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins are talking about I never want to see a merman. And the idea is that each country has their own rituals and apparently everyone has failed except Japan and America. <clears throat> Again, that's an interesting idea if we could see more into that whole situation where <clears throat> throughout the film we see this country, this country, this country and each one has their own different monsters and this nonchalant talk and dialogue the inner workings of the office space but also deal with these monsters and such maintaining them maintenance what could maybe it's an SCP facility instead you get a fairly boring slasher boring zombie movie and that was one of my main issues is that the first hour other than those semblance of moments you get a forgettable zombie movie that doesn't have the superficial great gore of a Lucio Fulci film like a zombie in, uh, in other films of that nature again the characters are decently acted but can you really say there's anything really great about any of these characters? No. You barely know anything about them. I remember like being, oh, it's interesting that the stoner didn't die off quick. And the stoner becomes one of the last people in the third act. <clears throat> okay, that was different. That was unique. I like that idea. And to be fair, the guy from... Fran Kron's I've seen much worse I say he's a little bit annoying but it's not really the actors just some of the I didn't try to be too hip dialogue but like in this bit here he's fine when he's being more natural like wait a minute isn't it a bit weird that everyone's acting so weird But then they ruined it with them trying to be clever. Puppeteers? Pop-tarts? Did you say pop-tarts? And it's interesting because he's sort of the, the clincher of the end of the world scenario because they assume that he's been killed, but he hasn't. He's still alive. And then he, him and her are able to make it underground. They go, oh shit. And of course it's weird that they don't, I don't know, double check to see if the guy's fucking dead. Because they have all these other fucking guys in the fucking background. You think they'd be able to check to see if a person's dead or not. For something this fucking serious. But I mean, again, what do I know? I guess it wouldn't be a movie. But that's what I mean. Like, you could have it where these guys did research, but then... Oh, there's something else that they don't know about them that the research was flawed or the research assumed and they had the wrong assumptions. Like they assume, oh, these three are weak or this is the dumb. Oh, she's a, she's the dumb blonde. But no, she's actually a, a stoner. Maybe when she gets stoned, she's actually more, <laughs> I don't want to say aware or hyped, but I don't know, just... That's what I mean, you can really play off that.
That's why me it's okay interesting idea to have a pheromone mist and and stuff like that there's a couple interesting ideas but just okay you have a couple do a couple interesting ideas create really that exciting of a movie no i didn't i could go watch the final girls i could go watch behind the mask the rise of leslie vernon i could go watch Back to the day, Watchword, Watchword 2. A lot more of these movies that are just a lot more either interesting or fun or energetic or just more worth my time. Which also, I think it is a bit weird that you want to have a slasher film convention of cliches, but then your villains is red dead zombies. It's so, okay, if you're really going with this cliche, would it not be a slasher type of villain? To do, I mean, it's like, okay, you're doing slasher film tropes in a red dead zombie film. So you're not even kind of following your ball game of trying to be cliche to the T. So it's like, okay, if you're not going to be cliche to the T, then be even more crazy and outrageous. And you could go into the idea that, yay, yeah, the, the guys are bored with the same old. You really have to spice it up. But then pretty much what happens is that they fall into the typical cliche tropes, A to B to C. They think the facility thinks they won and then the stoner again is the thing people don't expect. idea for the gods to be entertained the the kills aren't really that interesting to say the least makeup on the zombies are not too bad to be fair So I guess with the Americans, every time they do this, it has to be the cliche, the five, the virgin, the jot, the, the slut, all that stuff. Because that's, that's not every horror film. That's not even every type of American horror film. But I guess that's why you know, there's different countries and different countries are doing different takes on the, the horror film, so to speak. I didn't all this is fine and dandy on paper, but it's just again, I don't find it that exciting or as funny or as enticing as other people make it out to be.
my It's almost like this guy is almost like trying to be Charlton Copley, <laughs> you know, the actor from District Nine and such. Or it's like you might as well got Matthew Lillard. With it, if it was Matthew Lillard, that actually would have been interesting. Sort of a, a goof on his take on Shaggy from Scooby Doo. But I mean, the actor's not that bad, to be fair. The actor's not that bad. It's just, you know. I think just a few of the ways the character's written. <clears throat> Yeah, the actor's not that bad. <laughs> and this guy just taking out, I think... Maybe not early, but... I don't know. So yeah, sorry I'm not saying much. I, I haven't seen this film probably since it came out, so try to listen to the dialogue. Decent makeup effect. Yeah, then they release this gas, they go, let's split apart. But yeah, like, as I'm watching, I'm like, I can appreciate some of his clever pieces. Is just as a whole, it just, I don't know, just something about just not as entertaining as. Again, I'm sorry I'm not saying much to, to Jose Ballard. I just, I don't know what to say during this. Mm -hmm. 
My Y stand next to the window. I didn't have people during these like fight scenes. Maybe they more surprising their endeavor than people would think. <clears throat> so again, this guy gets a knife thrown into his back. He just dragged away <clears throat> and somehow he's alive. And you're thinking, okay. Not only that, apparently he stabbed more than once where you see blood spill out and he's still alive. And I didn't, no one checks to see if he's actually dead. You think you'd have some kind of person. Let's double check. <clears throat> I did how the fuck that guy isn't dead. Makes no sense to me. No fucking sense. I guess that's the point. Well, you assume he's dead just like they assume they're, he's dead. But again, if it's about the end of the fucking world, you would have one or two people out there on the sidelines. Okay, go out, check it, now go back in. You know where the person's at, you know the location, boom, go out, leave. But no, apparently it's not the case. So fucking whatever. I didn't, I mean... That obviously you can't see much of a kill because the guy's alive later. But still, it's like, for fuck's sake, man. <clears throat> then this one guy get hooked in the mouth or something, dragged up. Or is that later? Again, I keep specifying this. This is almost an hour into the movie. When you're almost an hour into the film, what am I actually getting to talk about on camera? A couple interesting, fun ideas. Okay, that's yes, the bear trap lifting them up. For some reason, I thought it was something like hook in the mouth. Maybe that's later or something. I don't know. <laughs> it might be. In, or maybe that's even a different movie I'm thinking of. <laughs> oh. Maybe get the bear trap off the guy's fucking back. Maybe that would help either lady. Or cut his fucking head off. I didn't, can you get the bear trap off his back? There you go. He did it himself. <clears throat> Again, it's... Okay, we have this myth that will make people do stupid stuff, so that way to keep having people follow the cliche. And in a way, it's a clever idea that kind of takes a bit of the fun away with have the characters be able to act differently. And I would say maybe the 
as the gods, they would be a bit more annoyed with that. They were a bit more irritated with that. Like, you're fucking manipulating this shit. This, you know, fuck this movie. This movie sucks. <laughs> So Japan got defeated by the tears turning the spear into a frog. <laughs> okay, that did make me laugh. Richard Jenkins yelling at the tears on the TV. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> Pretty much they forgot to put the cave in there. Which doesn't even matter because they have the fucking force field thing. I mean if they can do other stuff where they could put fake mist in it to make people change stuff. They could put a fucking force field in there too. I mean would it really matter if they made you? As long as these guys get killed? Or does that not work in your fucking ritual thing? <clears throat> oh yeah, this is the bit where Chris Hemsworth gets on his motorcycle and you think it's going to be this death-defying thing and he gets smashed to bits because of the force field. That's where the force field comes into play. And he falls to the CGI land. I deal with all these great death scenes. I mean, this movie doesn't even have good death scenes for a horror movie. Let alone anything else. I don't know, climb all the way down, walk, and then climb all the way up. Of course, this is in, like, I would call it sort of the Kevin Dillon from the Blob remake. You know, the motorcycle jump, only this time he crashes to a fucking force field. And it's like, okay, I like Chris Hemsworth as an actor, and he was given this great bid speech and that's the point is that he's doing this bid speech and then kind of like Sam Jackson Deep Blue Sea dies almost immediately so even Deep Blue Sea beat you to it movie and that's more of a fun film much more, more of an entertaining flick just not satisfied in the slightest I guess the, its point is to take the audience off guard and not expect it, but then it's like, well, what else was going to happen? We've seen the force field before with the bird. And what happened to the bird happened here. So again, we've seen the force field with the bird. If you remember the fucking bird, and the bird is the word, then you knew this was going to happen. 
I mean, they they. That's why they showed the bird thing in the first place. That's they showed the bird thing much early when they were going to the fucking cabin. So that this was such an out of the blue idea and motif. So instead it just becomes, okay, that's a character and what a lame way to die and crappy CGI. And how does it even work for your ritual? He died by force field? <laughs> like, think about it. Like, if that's the case, why don't they just go on and shoot them in the fucking head? They didn't die by the fucking monsters. They didn't die from the creatures. They died from a fucking force field. So, again, how does it even work with your fucking ritual motif? You, I don't know many horror slasher films where someone dies from a fucking force field. Except that stupid fucking movie, The Predator, that came out a few years ago. I think this is where he dies uh, while driving. And this is where he gets like a hook in the face or something. <laughs> so yeah, that doesn't even work with the fucking, for, the, the fucking ritual thing. Okay, here the ritual... And that's, they got people with guns. Why don't you just go and pop, 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 fizz? Well, what a relief it is. If a fucking force field can do it, then fucking anything else can fucking do it. And just saying, wouldn't that be the fucking case? Wouldn't that be the fucking deal, spiel, all that jazz? And just fucking saying, just fucking saying. Fuck you know, man. The old gods must love. Maybe they love fucking force fields. I don't know. They love force. If I was one of the gods, I'd be like, this movie's fucking boring. The death scenes are boring. The action scenes are boring. What's up with this crappy CGI? Like Chris Hemsworth going to shitty CGI land? Wow. For the first hour, this has been a boring fucking movie. This has been a boring fucking film. And Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford are the only ones that have brought a bit of energy to it. Again, no one double checks to see if the Jesse Williams character is dead. No one's double checking to see if the fucking uh, stoner guy's dead. Again, for the end of the world, you would think with all hundreds of people in this facility, they could send a fucking scout double check. I mean, I've seen slasher films where characters you think are dead, but they're not quite dead yet Friday the 13th part 3 remember Friday the 13th part 3 one of the bikers but then he sh pops up at the end and then he immediately gets his arm cut off by Jason and then the lead girl is able to get the axe to Jason's head so this happened in the past there have been slasher films where people you assume are dead but they're not dead Not as dead as we thought. I think this is where the stoner guy comes in to help. Because again, they're too fucking... St but I guess that's the thing. You have to have something happen. And like, oh shit. That's the whole point of it. Anytime people talk about this film, it's going to be the third act. And I can understand it to a point. Because you see the creature jamboree. I think the first 30 minutes should have been a much more interesting version of this or half a halfway point let the halfway point and then oh god we have half of a film left now we don't know what's going to happen next and again Waxworth Waxworth 2 other films have done that better a lot fucking better 
takes a fucking while for the zombie to kill this one girl, I'll say that. Red phone, don't let the red phone ring, it's Batman. Again, how the stoner is alive makes no fucking sense. Again, he got stabbed in the fucking back. Apparently, I mean, maybe did he get the knife out of his back and then stab the zombie, I guess? And that was whatever. At the same time, I'm like, okay, that's cool. The stoner is alive. Again, being stabbed in the back, it probably did nothing to hinder him. Which is fucking strange, but again, whatever. Hey, if we all get stabbed in the back, we can fucking run. <laughs> we could be fine. It's not like, oh, I had something in my back and it hit it. Doesn't even look like he's bleeding. And that's the, the guy the he killed earlier. So he wasn't stabbed. He was stabbing the zombie. And yeah, the, this guy's acting... Like, this stuff he does a good job in, this, uh, Fran Kron's. And this was in the trailer. Probably not something that should have been spoiled in the trailer, I would say that. Because I think the trailer ends with this elevator bit, and, like, that should not have been in the trailer. But then they had to put that in there to make people realize, oh, this is not just a typical slash and slasher tab in the woods. <clears throat> just as the thing, if you watch the trail, you know, okay, those two are surviving at least to the third act. So again, if you watch the trailer, it shows these two are alive in the trailer. See, if you watch the trailer, even that's spoiled. You don't know. I know the stoner ain't dead because in the trailer, <clears throat> and that's the thing with trailers. You don't know the movie exists until you see the trailer. But then when you see the trailer, potential surprises are spoiled. So again, the only way you would know about this film is if you saw the trailer. If you saw the trailer, you would have this bit here. You go, okay, that's going to happen sometime. So the fake death of the stoner, you're like, he's not really dead. So I don't know, just one of those things where... Damned if you do, 
damned if you don't. <clears throat> At least as a practical, the werewolf bit. But not everything. I mean, with the snake, you do have something like fucking Thulsa Doom had in Conan. This ghost creature, I don't mind. See, like, that would be a cooler villain for them to fight instead of backwood zombies. There's the, the ballerina thing if they chose that. This is the wannabe pinhead, wannabe Cenobite. Fucked up face, yeah. And yeah, I just say like this part would is the most interesting part of the movie. Only it's over an hour into the fucking film. And without the end credits, you have like 15 minutes left. And like, I'll give credit. This lady, uh, Kristen Connolly, she's not bad. I didn't, the acting, I don't have much issues with an act, the acting. I didn't, the stoner character, not sure about him at first. Looks like Bat's Headroom meets Penhead. <laughs> if Bat's Headroom was, well, I should say Matt Frewer. If Matt Frewer was Penhead. So, again, it's just a Cenobite. <clears throat> and this is one of those freeze frame moments, like the show takes all the different creatures and monsters. But again, it's like, how is it that a knife in the bat don't fu even fucking deter him? He's acting like he doesn't even have, he didn't have a fucking knife in his back. Is that something you just walk off and be like, oh, just a scratch, just a fucking paper cut. I've reacted more to a paper cut than this guy's acted with a fucking knife that was in his back. Shoot them both in the leg. Why didn't you shoot them both in the fucking legs? Dumb fuck. Pop, pop. Fizz, fizz. What a relief is. Just shoot them in the fucking leg. Dipshit. Why didn't you shoot them in the leg? They would fall down and then pop. There you go. Fuck if I know why. Why would he have... You only have one guy there. You have one guy there. Not 15 or 30. You only have one guy in this area? That's Sigourney Weaver. Which I don't know how the hell Sigourney Weaver got to be a part of this movie. Or why she did this film. I really know, like, why did Sigourney Weaver say yes to this? I don't remember working with Joss Whedon before, if that was the case. Like, why? I don't know. What lies beneath, that's, no. And really what this makes me want to do is see a fucking movie on SCP Containment Breach. If you don't know what that is, that's a video game. Where you're in a government facility locked down and there's all these creatures. And all these different rooms. 
that would make a much more like if the movie was more this you get into this earlier and then it's you surviving in this government facility with all these tr different creatures out of the woodwork that would be a much more f interesting fun horror film This scene is potentially cool, but it's ruined by all the fucking glorified CG. It would take effort to do it all practically, but the effort would be worth it. Like the giant fucking snake and... Like everything's CG, even the fucking werewolf was CG in that shot. <laughs> and this is the idea, and at least this is where it gets more bad shit, so that's where. I didn't because people were so bored in the first hour that when finally some crazy stuff happens, you go, oh, okay. We have want to be the strangers. We have this ghost creature. Killer fucking cobra, whatever. There's the strangers type of group. Even then, some of these could have been a bit more creative. And so I'm not saying much, but <clears throat> I mean, I'm sorry, a giant fucking CGI bat that looks like shit doesn't impress me. Again, if you let's do bits and pieces, which would you show bits of practicality? You don't have to show this whole fucking thing. Show a wing, show a face, a claw. I mean, the unicorn, I don't know how I feel about that, because it's so fucking weird. I mean, on one hand, it's different. I've never seen a unicorn kill someone before, so I'm like, okay, at least that's unique. But yeah, it's still pretty fucking crazy, though. Yeah, and it's pretty fucking weird, but... I and mean, like I said, at least it's rather unique. And in that security guard, there's nothing, sadly. I think more could have been done with that character. Of course, Bradley Whitford, he'll get to see his merman. Which is interesting, you know. 
At least that's a nice like callback because he mentioned that earlier. But yeah, the if anything mentions this film, it's going to be this bit of the, the finale. <laughs> See, the back of that merman's actually nice practical effects, and I like the idea of the blood shooting out the back of its neck, its vents, so to speak. I think that's actually pretty neat, pretty cool. And Richard Jenkins made it out, but it's this one girl that did him in. <clears throat> the irony of it all, that he survived all these monsters to be killed by the, the lead lady. <clears throat> Again, I'm sorry this isn't the best uh, commentary. I apologize to Jose Ballard, but it's like... I don't know how many times I you repeat the same thing over and over again. It's just, there's some fun to be had in the third act. I'll give you that. Like, I, and there's some interesting ideas, but again, it's like, let's play with the cliches by following the cliches. And, oh, it's the Monster Jamboree, but a lot of it's really crappy CGI's. Or just some off kilter ideas. Okay, it's a killer clown, but let's have a clown kind of like a killer clown from outer space type of creature. Let's have an alien type of creature. Let's have really gold for bro instead of just a giant fucking snake that's out of sci fi channel. Or a giant bat out of the fucking sci fi channel. I know the Goddard and Whedon, they wanted to do a satire on torture porn and stuff like. Because we are the guys. We want to see people suffer and we want to see people tortured and we want to see people get killed and this and that. And it's like, well, we want to see nice practical effects, but many of us, we want to see... Many of us actually want to see people succeed. We actually, we actually want to see people succeed. And we want to see people win, at least me and my friends do. We want to see people make it out of there. But yeah, it's weird that Sigourney Weaver is in this, like, I just like, hey, I get to do a day or two on here. But it's like, again, you want to stop doing Alien films, thus you die in Alien 3, but you'll do a film like The Cab in the Woods or... The cold light of day that Bruce Willis filled.
And so you know what? How about you make a third option? And that would make things maybe a bit more interesting. And you get these group of characters fight this god and wow, they actually tip the god's ass. Wow, didn't expect that. Only there's another god, a bigger god that, you know, okay, I was entertained. Good job. Or you know what? I've been pretty entertained by you guys. You guys did a good job. I'm going to give you a little bit of an edge. Oh, it's that zombie girl, right? The redneck girl. <clears throat> that will be so to get out of the elevator. So you get Sigourney Weaver axed in the head and both go off the cliff. Tavern, whatever the fuck you want to call it. As like I get the survival mentality, but then it's like, okay, you still just killed everybody, including billions of people, and I'm supposed to give a shit about you. So I get it, the survivor mentality, but again, this is, uh, I don't know, probably a hundred million innocent, you know, kids and babies that you just murdered as well. And I'm supposed to give a shit about you. Yeah, uh, I don't really. Not really. But that's the point, this is supposed to be some almost like hipster wink at the audience. Sorry, so I have to f had an ending where the world ends. Sorry, Joss Whedon. A lot of movies beat you to it. Yeah, you totally get it that you just, you know, killed a billion people. So this guy's about as good as Hitler right now. It's time to give someone else a chance. But that's not your fucking job to do that. You still killed like probably a, you know. Let's say there's a billion people. I don't know how many people are in the world. I just pick random numbers. A billion. Even if, you know, half of that. Let's say a third of that is decent people. That's still 300 million people. Wow, you did more damage than fucking Hitler. So, why should I care about these two characters? They're fucking emo, hipster, douchebag pieces of shit. Yay, oh, that's okay. Let's let uh, someone else take a crack at it. The only thing that's going to be left are the fucking roaches. A giant fucking hand. That giant hand might as well be a fucking middle finger. That giant hand might have been just a middle fucking finger to the audience. Going, 
Thank you, fuck you, bye. Thank you for watching. Now go fuck yourself. I didn't try to be this clever ending. I mean, is that the first fucking ending I've seen where everybody's fucking died? Sorry. Plenty of films have fucking beaten you to it. Why don't you name them? Because I'd be spoiling the movies and people would get mad. Understandably so, because it's like, well, I didn't want that movie spoiled. Yeah, I understand. There are movies that have done that better. How do I... I think I can't spoil that movie. I'll say this. It's a movie... Starring a guy from Top Gun named Anthony Edwards. I'll say that. It's a movie starring Anthony Edwards. That An ending like that. And you know it was done better. It was a much better movie. It's not a horror movie, but... It's, you know, yeah. But yeah. You're, you have two characters that are like, yeah, you know what, we had our chance. Fuck it. I guess it's not your fucking choice to do it. I also take it seriously, Matt. It's meant for comedy and humor, but I just didn't find the joke funny. I didn't find the joke humorous. Again, it's a bold, backward horror zombie movie for an hour. The only fun little snide moments is with Richard Jenkins and Bradley Whitford behind the scenes. I did part of me is like, I wish the movie was just about them. And maybe they have a redemptive arc or something else entirely different happens. The characters are, the actors are not bad, it's just they're basic. And then... Two of them are completely unlikable at the end because you led to the end of the fucking world because you're fucking selfish hipster emo douchebags. Um, so, fuck the characters. You're no better than Bradley Whitford and Richard Jenkins, honestly. You're no better. How they didn't care about you, you didn't care about the other people in the world who had nothing to do with this. So, you're no better than the fucking team who's watching the shit. You are no better. You are no better. Kristen Connolly and Fran Kranz. You are no better. They let people get killed for their own gain. You let a bunch, hundreds of millions of people, innocent people get killed because your own game. So you're not anything better. That's, I guess, the clever writing at hand. Oh, yeah, Monster Jamboree, but it's all done in shitty CGI. Again, I saw that bet done better in Watchwork and Watchwork 2 Lost in Time. And they had peanuts to work with. And again, if you get a fucking knife thrown into your back, you can walk off like it's a fucking paper cut. Not even bleeding. You're perfectly fine. You're not even limping. You're not barely moving. If you get a fucking cramp on the side, you can barely move. But if you get fucking thrown a knife into your back, you're perfectly fucking fine. How the fuck that works? I don't know. The movie... Oh no, he didn't get stabbed in the back. Yeah, he did. We just fucking saw it. Oh no, no he didn't. You, you didn't see that. He didn't even fucking limp. He was moving perfectly... F fucking shit. Fuck this movie. Fuck this film. It's overrated. It's overhyped. And lo and behold, again, this game changer that no one fucking has mentioned ever a fucking den. So, we'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.